right, so my take for you today is that sports and religion go hand in hand. Now those of you who play sports or are involved with them probably understand this, but there's probably some of you who might look at me kind of confused. And I mean, for me personally, it's my idol. I'm an addict. I, I spend so much of my time playing, thinking, watching sports, even reading about them. I mean, even in things that aren't like specifically sports related, like video games, I have spent an unreasonable amount of time playing. I spent 40 total days over the past three years playing Madden, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> and I mean, even right now, I'm, I'm thinking about the NFL draft a bit. That's on now. I mean, like even yesterday, as you see, it started yesterday. Instead of practicing, I watched it, <laughs> which probably is a bad choice, but we'll roll, we'll roll, uh, roll with it. All right. But how similar are sports and religion? I did just tell you they are. First thing I'd like to show is a bunch of comparisons. There are things that we strive after constantly in sports, stuff as like stuff as championships, or in religion, we search for a closer relationship for God or a gate into heaven. There are even things to represent these goals. We have stuff like the cross or Christ's uh, blood and blood and bread, bread and wine. There we go. <laughs> to help us get there. And then we also have stuff like rings to, re to resemble our accomplishments in sports. There are even similar gathering places that we go to experience these things. You go to a field or a stadium or a gym to partake in sports, or you can go to a church or some other meeting place to partake in religious activities. There are even similar ways that we spend our money there. We give, uh, we give teams our money to get things in return, such as tickets or a new stadium through tax or merch. Like, I mean, y'all know me. I think like half my wardrobe is Broncos merch. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> and in church, we'll give it to, through offering to pay for mission trips, get the pastor's salary, or be able to improve things about that specific church. And there's even similar structures in leadership, especially in like the Catholic church. We have stuff like the Pope or, or cardinals or bishops. Or even on the Protestant level, we have stuff like our pastors who will meet up and decide the future of the denomination in our specific area. And in, the, and in sports, we have stuff like the owners, the general managers, the coaches, or even in some instances, players like LeBron. Now you can see that there are a lot of similarities in their structure. But how could you... How, uh, but how about the prominence in there? How prominent... Like you might be looking and see, wonder how prominent religion can get in, or in sports can get in someone's lives. For this, I have a video, which I'll pull up here, if it'll work with me. All right, uh, this is fun. All right, so the gist of this whole video is, it's basically just a bunch of people cheering. They're throwing beer everywhere. They're dancing on tables. I wish I could show you, but it's not working with me. But I, could t but I wanna ask you, if, do you ever get like so excited that you're jumping on tables, throwing things, just like cheering and hugging people at church? I don't think you are. <laughs> uh, I know, like me personally, I would think I could like sit in church and just get bored while it's like, oh man, racket sports. I'm like super engaged. Um, I even like skip church, like watch the Broncos play. Or even when I'm still there, I have like the play, I have when the Broncos play, I have the play 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 on my phone, just watching it. <laughs> uh, and I know I'm not the only one who just did this. Like as you all see in front of you or under your chairs if you haven't noticed, those of you in the back, you could grab one of the ones like up in front of you because I don't think I put anything back there. <laughs> um, you can see that I'm not the only one with this problem. And yeah, I do have a problem. I can't seem to balance my faith with sports. So how do I do that? First thing I'd like to show, I mean, yeah, I, are, I already said this, I have a problem. The survey I did show, here's some answers uh, of a different question I'll bring up in a second. I should not gone to the slide this early. <laughs> but I asked people the question, how do they, how do you integrate your faith in sports? And like half the people who answered said something along the these answers, to glorify God. And I talked with Coach Matthews about this, and he said, yeah, it's mostly a cop out. People who think they're even, even people who think they're doing it, aren't doing it in the way that they think they are. The other common answer was prayer. I mean, you can see these. And prayer is good and all, but especially at something, at a place like a Christian school, it's kind of forced. It's kind of the expectation here. 
not something that you go out of your way to do. So how do we, yeah, how should we integrate these things? Uh, there are two, there are two philosophies that I would like to show you that could help you with this. The first, muscular Christianity. And my eyes over here, not there. <laughs> um, the basic gist of this is that it gives sports religious value. It'll help you build, it'll help you build characteristics like your honesty, your loyalty, your discipline, cooperation. And it's even formed things such as the YMCA. That was created in England as an outlet to get people into church. I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it's also formed other things, things such as the Olympics. And I can tell you, I did not have any clue, like, that's, this muscular Christianity thing was that impactful. I mean, I didn't even know about it until, like, a month ago. <laughs> so, that shows where it's at. But it's been super impactful in, like, forming the structure of sports, so we should be able to integrate that into our own experience with it. The other approach is the Corinthian approach. Now to contrast this, I have the Spartan approach up on the screen. The Corinthian approach, as you see, is this like cooperative approach that like seems very like Christianese, I guess. Well, the Spartan approach is this selfish approach that it's like when it gets really competitive and well global, it's really big. And to show you the difference with these, I'm going to tell you how my approach is to a competitive sport versus a, a casual sport or casual event has impacted me. I think back to like a month ago during Vicious Volleyball. I did not play well, I'll be honest with that one. But, and it was a competitive setting, so I'm taking the Spartan approach here. And then Dylan Sorokman, he made a comment to me after the game saying, like after I shanked a volleyball or whatever, playing a bit after, he said to me like, oh, I wonder if that's why you lost. And I told him, shut up. Now those of you that know me, <laughs> those of you that know me, know that that's not much to me, I say it a lot as kind of casual conversation, but I said it, honestly, I like, it's like one of the few times I've legitimately meant it. And I said it to a friend. <laughs> I took such a poor approach to it that I was like, I, I was really mean to one of my friends. And then, when, and then a few days later, the juniors and seniors got together to play some volleyball because this just happened. And it was this more casual thing. And I honestly did play well, but it was like one of those things, my approach to it, I was like having fun with it. I wasn't like getting mad at people over my own mistakes or like some like offhand comment that's supposed to be kind of funny. <laughs> so, so yeah, you should you should be able to bring high character into sports because that'll affect your actions. And I wish I could tell you to do something like more religious, but I couldn't. You can't really just like get down on your knees and start praying in the middle of a game while you're on the field or whatever. That doesn't happen and really shouldn't, honestly. Um, so yeah, you should, you should be able to take Christian approaches to it. You should be willing to, uh, yeah. And by taking these Christian approaches to it, you're not even, you're not just showing God to others. You're also improving yourself. You're making yourself a better person by approaching sports in the correct way. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the importance of community in sports. There have been multiple events over this capstone experience that I've shown you. The first was Noah's watch party. And, and yeah, as you can see, I have a picture of Evan with Noah's dog, not a picture of any sports things happening. That's because we didn't really focus on the sports. We focused on a lot of things. We threw cups at each other for like 20 or so minutes. We watched Evan and Micah play the balls game. And the thing that probably most of you have heard by now, at least like the juniors and seniors, was Kyle sending feet pics to the <laughs> Italian girls. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember the game. I barely remember it as is right now. I'm gonna remember Kyle sending feet pics. <laughs> The other thing was Noah's sports day. As you see, again, Kyle. I'm going to remember <laughs> Kyle flexing with Noah's brothers, not the sports I played. I tried practicing and naming off some sports that I played. I couldn't. I don't even remember. This happened like three weeks ago. <laughs> and a lot of people that showed up didn't play, don't play sports much. Like, I think of you, Will. You were there. I don't think I've ever seen you play sports outside of like the few times you've been at volleyball club. <laughs> 
and people were just there to be around others. Like, I don't think Kyle's there to play sports. I think Kyle's there to be around friends. <laughs> so it's clear that there is a huge correlation between sports and community because that's what sports does build. It builds community through ways that people couldn't earlier. Or otherwise, I should say. Now, how we're, now, I've already talked about how we're supposed to approach sports while well, we're actively involved in them. But how are we when we're not supposed to be involved in them? I think, like, when you're with friends or family, when you're at school or even at church, like a lot of my speeches. Um, yeah, and I mean, I said this earlier. I've skipped church to, like, watch sports and do stuff. But even at stuff like, that's, yeah, I also, like, when I'm there, I'm like checking fantasy football lamps during the season to make sure my players are healthy and available. <laughs> yeah, and in school, there's been teachers who have given me valuable time, valuable time to work on projects that I really should be <laughs> focusing on, like Static. He, he's given a lot of time to work on outlines recently. I think I've used one of those like four days to actually work on the outline. The rest has been me reading sports names, honestly. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> and even yesterday, Miss Matthews gave my class time to work on our capstone. She gave the whole classroom. And I, I did for half of it, <laughs> which is something. But for the other half, I was listening to Zabo rattle off where players were going to college, or like where sports players went to college. So how do we deal with sports then? My answer is we should deal with them like a sandbox. That's the approach we should take with it. Scott Perry gave me this analysis, this uh, analogy during one of our interviews, and what he said was, "You don't want it to, you don't want your, uh, you don't want yourself to be distracted." Wow, sandbox is fun. You get to play with it. You get to have fun with it. But you keep some sand with you. You're going to get distracted by it. Like you reach your hand in your pocket, and now you're feeling sand. You're thinking about the sand, not so that, not what, what's at hand. I think of like things like homework, where it's like. There are a lot of things that could distract me while I'm trying to do it. I mean, I kind of have, like, to get something done, I have to, like, turn my phone completely off, set it to the other side of the room, make sure that there's nothing that distracts me, like a text message, news story, anything like that. And even, like, during church, like, I've said this so many times right now, but there's so many things that distract me. Like, I think notifications, again, texts, news. And even screen, my screen time is sent to me during my church service, so I end up spending like five, ten minutes looking at that during the service, which is not good. <laughs> so what we have to do is try to limit as much exposure to the sand as we can by not taking it with us when we're not supposed to have it. I mean, even as you're sitting here, you've probably been distracted by something. I know when I was in learning services earlier, I was distracted by people walking through this hallway. <laughs> so... And I'm not trying to like make y'all feel guilty or anything. I'm just bringing it up for presence here. Like being completely honest, if I was watching the speech, I would definitely be distracted. Like I think this whole survey thing that I handed y'all, I'd definitely be distracted by that. <laughs> I, I considered not bringing it because I knew it would be a distraction, especially if I were there. <laughs> so in conclusion, I just want to make it clear, sports, whatever other idol you may have, because this is applicable to other things, isn't a bad thing. It's only when, yeah, it's only when it begins to to control you and control your actions that it does become a bad thing. When you start to revolve your life around it. And yeah, as I said, this isn't just sports. There's stuff like money, celebrities, pop culture, even work for some people that they could just get themselves really caught up in. And if it ain't like, also if it ain't clear, I still struggle with this stuff. I still struggle with my idolization of sports. But I'm hoping I'm providing a good blueprint, not just for you, but for myself, on how we should approach sports or approach whatever other idol we have. So I'd like to make a challenge for y'all. I'd like to find a place where you haven't put God in your life. It doesn't have to be an idol. It could be anything like a hobby. But there will be some ones that will be like tough to know. Like if you ask me how to include God in knitting, I'm not going to tell you what. I don't know. <laughs> but... That's where you come in. You gotta like researchers, research how to do it, how you should approach it. And it will be hard, it will be, it will be long, but I believe the results will be well worth it. So thank you for listening to the speech. Um.